The history of race in the United States is a controversial subject, one that draws a lot of misinformation when discussed. In 2019, 41% of Americans didn't think slavery was the primary cause of the Civil War. This largely is the result of a deliberate attempt by Southern groups after the war to misinform the populace, going as far as to change history curriculum in Southern schools and building massive, occasionally hideous statues of old Confederate heroes. This attempt to revise American history is known by historians as the Lost Cause and seeks to dodge the reputation of racism and treason the Confederacy has received and defend it as a force for states' rights. In reality, nothing can be further from the truth. To find the abundance of evidence supporting the claim that slavery was the central cause for the Civil War, you don't have to look much further than Mississippi's Declaration of Immediate Causes, which states, In the momentous step which our state has taken of dissolving its connection with the government of which we so long formed a part, it is but just that we should declare the prominent reasons which have induced our course. Our position is thoroughly identified with the institution of slavery, the greatest material interest of the world. It then goes on to cite hostility to slavery, which advocates the equality of the black man socially and politically as one of its reasons for seceding. Then there's Confederate Vice President Alexander Stevens's cornerstone speech. In it, he said, The new constitution is put at rest forever. All the agitating questions relating to our peculiar institution, African slavery, as it exists amongst us. The proper status of the black man in our form of civilization. This was the immediate cause of the late rupture and present revolution. Our new government's foundations are laid. Its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the black man is not equal to the white man. That slavery, subordination to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. This, our new government, is the first in the history of the world based upon this great physical, philosophical, and moral truth. Finally, after the war, Confederate Colonel John S. Mosby set the record straight himself in a letter writing, The South went to war on account of slavery. South Carolina went to war, as she said in her secession proclamation, because slavery would not be secure under Lincoln. South Carolina ought to know what was the cause for her seceding. So why do two out of five Americans claim that slavery didn't cause the Civil War? Well, in all fairness, to say that slavery was the only cause for the war would be oversimplifying the situation to say the least, as even if slavery weren't an issue, the North and South still had plenty of other issues to deal with. Because the North was largely industrial and needed tariffs or import taxes to protect local products, trade policy was a huge point of contention between the two regions. The South, needing foreign imports to support its economy, however, wanted to lower tariffs, which would then threaten the North's local economy. But aside from trade and taxes, the North and South were ultimately at odds culturally and politically. As I mentioned before, the North was more industrial and urban and was home to a higher population than the South, which was mostly rural and agrarian. Considering that political power is granted by the people in the U.S., the North's higher population gave it a significant political advantage over the South. While it's important not to simplify something as complicated as the Civil War, however, you can't deny that slavery was the central cause of the war without being in blatant contradiction with the historical record. But the lost cause isn't just objectionable and wrong for inaccurately explaining the cause of the war as, unfortunately, the lies don't end there. Another core tenet of the lost cause holds that slaves were generally treated well and that beatings and whippings were the anomaly, not the norm. This is categorically false as the record shows that even if they weren't beaten as badly as the image of slave cruelty Gordon, also known as Whipped Peter, slaves were beaten consistently if they resisted, disobeyed, weren't working fast enough, or even if the slave owner just felt like it. This wasn't limited to men either. Slave owners would dig holes to fit a pregnant woman's stomach into so they could beat her without harming the baby. Beatings were also no secret. Newspapers would often describe how many lashes a slave for auction had in advertisements to help buyers determine how compliant they were. Slaves who refused to submit could be and often were killed by their slave owner with no legal consequence. Aside from beating, slaves were also constrained by chains and metal collars and were sometimes even branded. White men could legally and often would sexually assault or abuse black women, though they sometimes abused men and children too. In fact, some female slaves were sold as fancy maids, or in other words, sex slaves. Slaves were almost universally malnourished, victims of malpractice, and whipped for seeking education. From as early as the age of six, black children were sent to the fields working 15 to 16 hours a day during harvest time. Another key facet of the lost cause is the myth of northern aggression, that the South seceded to defend its rights and was forced into war by an oppressive federal state. This one is pretty laughable, considering how easy it is to debunk. For starters, the Confederates literally started the war themselves by trying to commandeer a military fort that wasn't theirs and violently bombarding it after they were met with resistance. Let's also not forget that the South seceded in protest of a legitimate election. 
In fact, if the election of 1860 weren't legitimate, it's only because 10 states in the South refused to put Lincoln's name on the ballot, limiting their citizens' right to elect the candidate of their choice. Not that it necessarily would have mattered, of course. Furthermore, one of the main reasons the Civil War began was that the U.S. was too complacent, not aggressive about secession. Lincoln's predecessor, James Buchanan, did essentially nothing to prevent the South from seceding, and has been judged pretty harshly by history because of it. Plus, Lincoln initially didn't plan to free the slaves, desiring instead to prevent the expansion of slavery. As he wrote to Alexander Stevens, do the people of the South really entertain fears that a Republican administration would directly or indirectly interfere with their slaves or with them about their slaves? If they do, I wish to assure you, as once a friend and still I hope not an enemy, that there is no cause for such fears. The South would be in no more danger in this respect than it was in the days of Washington. I suppose, however, this does not meet the case. You think slavery is right and ought to be extended, while we think it's wrong and ought to be restricted. That, I suppose, is the rub. It certainly is the only substantial difference between us. Thankfully, Lincoln would eventually emancipate the slaves, and slavery became unconstitutional in 1865. Of course, revising history with lies wasn't the only thing pro-Confederate groups did after the war to vindicate their heroes. Upon retaking control of the states after Reconstruction, Southern whites mandated that exclusively lost cause literature be taught in schools. Texts that didn't support Confederate revisionism were rejected. Statues and monuments to the Confederacy were built all across the country more than 700 of which still stand. And then, of course, there's the flag, the Northern Virginia battle flag used in the second and third national flags of the former Confederacy that was used to represent the segregationist Dixiecrat Party in 1948 and the segregationist movement as a whole after the Brown versus Board decision. Now the flag is seen in foes of alt-right white supremacist rallies and the infamous 2021 insurrection against the Capitol. But why does all this matter? Well, for one thing, misinformation like this stands in the way of people being informed, and information can be the difference between good and, shall we say, misguided decisions. For another, racism in the U.S. still exists, and not just in the South. If we sweep the suffering of black Americans under the rug by looking the other way from those responsible, we invalidate their struggle and risk making the same mistake again. It's a dangerous lie, but it's one that can be easily debunked if you know where to look. Thanks for watching.